Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here with StringTheory.com, uh, back with, I think, the ninth installment of our daily Q&A series. Uh, and the question today is a pretty common one. Uh, what are the best sources of information for athletes or coaches to build their knowledge base? Um, let me just start by saying, probably not blogs, probably not YouTube channels. That includes my website, and that includes this YouTube channel. Um, once you've already dug into the resources I'm going to suggest, uh, reading stuff online, watching YouTube videos, uh, as long as you choose that information judiciously, that can be a good way to, to deepen your understanding, maybe learn you know, a few more tips, a little bit more nuance that perhaps you weren't aware of before. Uh, but the things I'm going to suggest in this video are, I think, going to be better resources for most people. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> First things first, I think the best thing, uh, the best place to start is going to be with textbooks. Uh, I know that's not a particularly popular solution. Most people don't like just sitting down and reading a textbook, but when it comes to really gaining both uh, a large breadth and depth of knowledge, you really can't do better than a textbook. Um, I think the biggest benefit you get out of a textbook is just it really helps you uh, hone your bullshit detector. Um, I, I see a lot of uh, questions, comments, feedback uh, on videos I make, articles I write, um, from people asking about something that probably wouldn't be a question at all um, if they just understood really basic physiology or really basic anatomy or really basic biomechanics. Um, and it's one of those things like textbooks, they aren't fun, they aren't fun to read, um, but if you read them and understand them and it sticks with you, it's going to make everything else you learn from then on out, it's going to make that much, much more beneficial because you'll have a lot easier time identifying good information and identifying bad information, uh, know what to stick with, know what to avoid, and also, you'll have more context for the information that you do learn, so it'll probably uh, stick with you better and be more beneficial for you. So with that in mind, uh, the textbooks that I would recommend every lifter get is one, just a basic um, anatomy and physiology textbook. I have the one by Bachel and Earl. I think it's very good. Um, ex an exercise physiology textbook. I have Wilmore, Kinney, and Costell. I think it's very good. Um, for more on strength training specifically, uh, Science and Practice of Strength Training by Zatsiorski and Kramer is exceptional. Uh, and then round that out with really any good introductory biomechanics textbook uh, and a human nutrition or sports nutrition textbook. Um, most of them are going to have the vast majority of the same information, and uh, I'm not particularly partial to any of them. So um, that is where you should start. The next thing is going to be talking to people who uh, have a solid education background, who have also accomplished the things you want to accomplish. So, um, you know, talking to other athletes and coaches who, you know, have worked with the athletes you want to work with or who have accomplished something in their sport that you want to accomplish. Um, so really a deep understanding, that's going to be the marriage of both, um, you know, just facts, book learning, with experience. That's, that's where true deep understanding comes from. And so at first, you can't, you can't hack experience. You can't uh, meaningfully speed up that timeline. You just have to put in the work and put in the years. And so with textbooks, that is going to give you that knowledge base, and you can acquire that pretty quickly. I mean, textbooks, 600 pages, Put in 20 or 30 pages a night, uh, you know, you can read a textbook in a month, 20 days. Uh, again, it's not going to be fun to read, but you can pick up a lot of information very quickly that way. Um, that's, that's going to be the fastest part of the education process. And then uh, talking to people who have been at it for a long time and have accomplished what you want to accomplish, um, that's not as good as your own experience, but you're also going to be able to glean uh, lessons from their experience to, um, you know, give you things to look out for in in your own experience, in your own training, in your own coaching. And then after that, just time. Um, I've been, 
I've been lifting now for 12 years and I've been coaching for seven, eight. Uh, and I mean, still to this day, like I, I will tend to defer to lifters who, you know, may have not lifted as much as I have, but if they've been in the game for 20, 30 years, uh, they'll probably have insights about the training process that I don't have. Um, and same thing with coaches, coaches who have been doing, doing it for a long time uh, and have really been making the efforts to continually improve. Um, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good for, for the amount of time and experience that I have. Uh, but you know, I, I can't put myself in a time machine and just speed up 20, 30 years of, uh, experiential learning. So number one, uh, get yourself in textbooks right away, learn those uh, as quickly as you can, and refer back to them constantly. Make sure that information um, stays in mind. Next thing, talk to people uh, who, who have that life experience um, and can, can help kind of guide you, show you the way. And then after that, it's, it's just a matter of training, coaching for a long, long time um, with, a, with a conscious effort uh, for getting better. That's those, those are the three, in my opinion, those are the three uh, best sources of education for most people. And then, you know, again, uh, once, you've, once you've done the first and second steps, uh, as you're putting in the reps, as you're putting in the time, um, reading blogs, watching YouTube channels, that stuff is good, uh, but it's, it's not going to be as meaningful. Uh, it's not going to give you the same depth and breadth of understanding um, as talking to people who have walked the walk and as, you know, building that uh, knowledge base from reading textbooks. So, um, yeah, that's that's my basic answer to that question. Um, and I know some people, like, I, on some level, I know that that's not particularly helpful advice because I do know a lot of people just simply won't read textbooks. Um, I... I've been recommending this for a long time, and I think maybe a half dozen people have actually gone out and picked up the textbooks I've recommended and actually read them. So if if you really, really don't think you're going to go that route, um, some other good resources, uh, I would recommend my own here, The Art and Science of Lifting, uh, by myself and Omar Isaf. Um, the Muscle and Strength Pyramids by Eric Helms are also very, very good. And uh, Scientific Principles of Strength Training and the Renaissance Diet by Mike, by Mike Isratel uh, are also very, very good. Um, so if you, if you are really, really against reading textbooks, uh, those would also be um, some good suggestions. But I would not recommend any of those resources, my own included, uh, over, starting out, over starting out by reading textbooks. Um, so again, just to recap, read textbooks, talk to people who, who have been walking the walk for a long time to, to try to learn from their experiences, and then just spend the time training, coaching, um, gaining that experience, which is invaluable, but you can't, uh, you can't rush. It just takes time. Uh, so that is the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you have questions, ask them in the comments below. And if yours is my favorite, I will pick it and answer it in that next video. So uh, until then, hope your training's good. Hope you have a great day. And I will see you in the next video.